Hello, my name is Danny Japani, and today we are at Lake Suwa. Welcome, and in today's video, we will explore Lake Suwa, well known for its appearance in the movie Your Name. But is it as magical as the anime makes it seem to be? I think it's time to find that out. So, today we are leaving to Lake Suwa. It is half past five right now, so it's very early. But without further ado, let's just go. Today's travel is very special since it's the first one I'm doing alone, and for that reason, we have three goals. One, explore the area. Two, don't get lost. And three, catch the sunset before it's too late. So, we have arrived at the station near Lake Suwa. We are going to check out Lake Suwa later. First, we are going to the Honjin Inawami house. And we're going to walk there. I missed my train, unfortunately. That's why I'm here a little bit later than expected. But nothing can keep us down, so let's go. My first impression of the area was nothing short of amazing. After walking for a while, we reached our first destination. So as you might remember, I was supposed to be at the Honjin Inawami, where we're going in a minute, but I found out that the temple, where I was also supposed to be at, is super close by, like, like, like one minute. And there are multiple, so probably we're also going to see another one, but I couldn't pass out on this opportunity to check it out. So that's what we're going to do now. The temple I came across was part of a multiple complex called Suwa Taisha, but more about that later. After taking a quick look, we arrived at the first destination of the day. Right behind me is Hojin Iwanami, and this landmark used to be the building that hosted the creme de la creme of society. It is said to be the most, one of the most beautiful gardens of Japan is inside of it. Unfortunately, today we can't visit because it is closed and it opens right before Golden Week, so in two weeks. So maybe in the future I will go, but for now I can't. What's really cool about this building is that it has all kinds of escape routes because royal figures and important political figures will come here. So yeah, it's definitely something to check out for yourself. And I will certainly do that later in the future, but for now I have to pass on to that because it is closed. Now the area of Lake Suwa has some surprises, like the one that we are seeing next. So before we are checking out the beautiful lake, it is time to make a quick stop. So right now I'm at a foot bath. So this is like a onsen for your feet. They have these in the city. Heard about it, I read about it and I finally found one. So let's check it out. The onsen for your feet is a great place to take a break. Didn't stay for too long though, we are on a mission. So far, so good. In Lake Soa there are many activities to do. You can for example go jogging, or go fishing, or just cruise on the lake. Whatever floats your boat. You see what I did there. <laughs> but yeah, there are many things to do. There is a story about the tragic love. It's the biggest lake in all of Nagano Prefecture. Since I was traveling on foot, I had the great opportunity to really soak in the landscape. The lake gives a peaceful vibe and the Japanese Alps running it are just the best. So right now we are walking towards Hakashima Castle and actually walking here is so peaceful. It has been so much fun and actually a bright about there. Yes, between the mountains. You can usually see Mount Fuji on a clear day, but today it's not really clear. so. We're unlucky, I guess, but it's still cool to know that it's up there. And yes, we're going to walk towards Akashima Castle. Taking a break, having a drink, and some food. Now there are two reasons why I stop here. First of all, this is a family mart. And second of all, there is our next destination. Hakashima Castle is by far the smallest castle I have seen up till now. With its nickname the Floating Castle, I expected it to be an imposing castle. 
Now that it's been set, it's still a beautiful castle. It's a little worn down, which gives it a more authentic vibe. So we are on top of Takashima Castle right now. If you look up there, normally you will be able to see Mount Fuji, but it isn't clear enough, unfortunately for us. Um, Takashima Castle was built in 1592 and it was used up till 1871 by the Suwa clan. Surrounding the castle was a beautiful garden that if you have time to spare, you should definitely check out. It's a great sight to see the castle from a distance and its outer walls kept the people safe during the time it was used. After seeing the garden, it was time to walk ahead. At this time, I ran into some trouble. So I was on my way and I just got asked to join a cult. Um, I said I was too busy to join a cult. So I'm going to where we're going. The place is called Takasugi An. And yes, I want, really wanted to go here. Mainly because it's just such a weird structure. And it definitely reminded me of House Moving Castle. Not that it looks like that. Uh, but it definitely reminded me of that because of the way that it looks like it could fall apart at any moment. I'll tell more about the building when we get there. So it's just 40 minutes of walking left and then we're there. So yeah, let's go. So right behind me over there is Takasugi An and it is so unbelievably quirky. I'm going to show you guys. Uh, I don't know if I can go up with the drone, but I think I'm gonna do it <laughs> nonetheless. And uh, because this area, man, it's so beautiful. I had to walk for an hour, so it was pretty far, but it's definitely worth it, although it are just two tiny houses. I thought it was just one, so actually I'm quite lucky, but yeah, let's see what it's all about. The literal translation of Takasugi-an is a tea house that is built too high. The house is built on top of two chestnut trees. It's only accessible by a freestanding lander. The whole house is made from natural material. So I was just vlogging, minding my own business. Do I get a call from my little sister? Yeah, she is here, live from the Netherlands with us. And this is actually a tea house. So we're going to drink some tea. I bought some tea at the Lawson Kampai. After calling with my little sister, which took up some valuable time for our mission, it was time for our last stop, the main Suwa Daisha Shrine. So we are at the main Suwa Daisha Shrine. There are about 10,000 of these complex around the lake. And it is supposed to be one of the oldest shrine complexes in all of Japan from the Shinto religion. So yeah, the one we saw before was a, a different one. It's the last one, it is five o'clock right now. So I hope to get to the lake uh, before the sun sets, but we'll see how that goes because it is already pretty late. And yeah, we'll get going. I checked out the shrine very hastily, as you can imagine. The shrine is very cool and has some great scenes. If you stick around for some time, you might be able to see a ceremony. As fast as I could, I walked towards the lake, missing the sunset by an inch. If you ask me if this lake is worth a visit, and an appearance in the anime, the answer is yes. We managed to achieve two of the three goals, which isn't bad. Hopefully we'll accomplish all next time. I want to thank you all for watching the video. This is already the end of it. If you haven't already and you've made it to the end of the video, please consider clicking the subscribe button. Also the like button if you liked the video. I want to thank you all so much for watching. This was Danny Japan and I hope to see you in the next one.